All right, guys, GoBoy32 here checking out. So we're sitting out here in a Freedom Shack, and we're getting ready to do a really cool video. This is the fun part that I like to have. This is uh, this is not going to the range. This is all the crazy stuff. But in any case, what we want to do, and a lot of people are going to say, this is blasphemy. And I, I know where you're coming from, and it's okay. Oh, relax. But we're going to do a comparison between two barrels from one extreme to the other. Now, this guy right here, this is the Bear Creek Arsenal. This is a stainless steel barrel. This has a uh, mid-length gas system, and we're going to be taking a look at it. But Bear Creek Arsenal sent this thing out because I wanted them to be part of this deal. What I am doing is I'm trying to root for the underdog. This is an $80 barrel, and we are going to compare it to this guy right here. Uh, this is a proof barrel. This is their full stainless steel barrel. One of the reasons why, and we'll get into this later on, why I wanted a full stainless steel barrel is because I've heard things about the carbon wrap. They're pretty good, up, but what I want is a barrel that's not going to deform, not deform, but uh, the a point of impact shift after 20, 30, 40 rounds. Because in a three gun event, you may be running through a jungle run, like uh, the one we did down there at uh, Clinton House. We had one we were shooting out to 500 yards, then we had a jungle run where it was like 24 rounds consecutively, bop, 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 and then we had to jump back in and start shooting back out to 500 yards. When you have a shift in impact, well, that could be a problem. But in any case, uh, here's the proof barrel. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of these guys. And, and that's one of the deals. This whole series is going to be really neat in that we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison as to why you pay uh, two twenty-five hundred dollars for a rifle when we have another rifle over here that may be under four hundred. And how will they compare with one another in a course of fire or a uh, a competition. So it's going to be fun. This is this is a fun series. This is kind of going to be kind of cool. Uh, for the most part, all these things were uh, purchased. I did have some contributors. Uh, uh, Optics Planet uh, did some stuff. They sent some stuff into the channel. We got some trigger manufacturers who sent some stuff in. But the idea is that we're going to build the best rifle we can on a budget, and then the best rifle we can with the exception of some considerations, like I'm not going with a carbon fiber handguard because I really don't think that that's a necessary thing, but it's going to be fun. So let's get on. We're going to take a look at these things. I'm going to bring them down. We're going to put the bore scope in it, see what the uh, bore looks like on these things, and do side-by-side -side comparisons. It'll be fun. Uh, I will tell you this. We are doing something new. I am going to accurize both of these uh, rifle uppers. Uh, as a matter of fact, what we're planning on doing is I'm going to go ahead... I'm going to put this upper together with using the Bear Creek Arsenal, and we're going to take it out and see how it works. And I'm going to accurize it using this uh, Wheeler Accurizer flush thingy, whatever it is, uh, as well as we are going to uh, seat the barrel using this uh, Loctite 609. Should be fun. Let's get on with the, uh, the comparison, but I just wanted to give you a little insight on items that I think are going to be fun on this deal. Here we go. Stand by. All right, guys, here we go, man. We've got two barrels here. One is $80. The other one I bought uh, through Big Daddy Unlimited with a considerable discount. But these typically these things are about $540, $500, bucks, whatever. Uh, I decided that I wanted to really put together a, an awesome three-gun, you know, kind of like a hand-me-down rifle to my son that would always be in the family. Of course, they will always be in the family. Anyway, let's do this. First of all, the Bear Creek Arsenal comes wrapped up just like this. I've, I've actually taken and opened this thing up. It comes wrapped in a piece of, uh, what do you call that, styrofoam. Let's go ahead and open it up. Look at that. And that's, that's actually really, really nice looking piece of stainless steel. All right, so this right here is the barrel from... Bear Creek Arsenal. And as you can see, it's a stainless steel barrel. Let's go with some of the details. This thing's chambered in 5.56, unlike the proof barrel, which is chambered in 2.23. Now, what's the difference? There's a little bit more tolerance in the chamber of a 5.56 than there is in a 2.23 wild. Now, what does that mean? It, it means that the jump and the expansion of the shell casing is going to be limited where in a 5.56 it's a larger chamber 
and it's more forgiving. So over a period of time, you may experience, well, you know what? I don't want to get into the details because everybody's going to hammer me on if I'm, I'm wrong on something. But in any case, that's uh, what the chamber looks like in this Bear Creek Arsenal. Let's go ahead real quickly and just do a real quick flyby. It's a very nice, very nice looking barrel. Now, it does look like at one point in time they had a what appears to be a, a gas block attached to this thing. Also, you can tell right here you've got some areas where it looked like some screws were on it. I don't know if this is something that I'm worried about, but uh, not no big deal. Look right there. We've got it where it says 556 five, NATO. Very cool. Uh, one half by 28 inch threads. You can see the crown. Not much of a uh, crown on the barrel itself, but I will tell you this. The interior of this guy is awesome looking from what I've seen. But in any case, you can see the chamber and it's clean as M4 feed ramps. Let's go ahead and pull the proof barrel out and see what it looks like. Okay, so proof barrels are pretty much known for their accuracy. These things are handmade. Uh, they are hand lapped. They are pretty much awesome. This thing's serial numbered and this is the way it came. You do get it just like this. Uh, this barrel is reasonably a lot heavier than the uh, Bear Creek Arsenal. It also comes with its own gas tube. Reason being is this is an intermediate gas system and I just wanted to show you guys what the differences are between a mid-length and an intermediate. As you can see the gas holes are a little bit longer. Now I've actually taken this and put it uh, on the on the rifle build itself kind of mocking it up I've scarred up the barrel a little bit right there but I will tell you this uh, very very nice looking barrel let's go ahead and pull this cap off without tearing up my uh, fingernails here all right so from the front to the rear you can see the barrel extension right there one of the things that I noticed is that the barrel extension these little pieces right here this is a little bit bigger than the guy is over here on the Bear Creek Arsenal both of these guys are 416 stainless steel this one is a 223 wild of course and I want to show you what the differences are in the crown you can see really neat let's see if I can make sure that's focused in all right, so the crown you can see on the proof barrel is very nicely machined. There's not a crown that's put in on the Bear Creek Arsenal. Of course, you're talking about $80, but look at those two. Very nice. Let's take a look at the barrel extensions and the feed ramps. The detail on the proof barrel is just a little bit more refined than it is on the Bear Creek Arsenal, as you can see right there inside the chambers. You can almost see the difference in the size of the chambers from a 223 wild to a 556. Okay. When we were talking about weight, let's go ahead and pull the old scales out here. I know people that's probably making people cringe. <laughs> the Bear Creek Arsenal barrel is two pounds 1.1 ounce now here's the difference and this is one of the reasons why i went with the full stainless steel barrel on the on the proof and we'll do a full-blown review on this guy here very shortly but this thing is two pounds eight ounces right off the bat one of the one of the things that i wanted to go with a thicker profile barrel and not primarily the carbon fiber is that i needed this thing to withstand the the changes when it when you're shooting the point of impact is very, very important. All right, so here we go. I've dimmed the lights down so you can see exactly what's going on, but we're gonna go ahead and put this thing in. There's the endo snake. Uh, there's the chamber, as you can see right there. Tooling marks aren't that bad. Let's go ahead and look. There's the M4 feed ramps. And what I wanna do is just a comparison. As you can tell, there's some bits and pieces on there. Wow, this thing really does do some good definition work. All right, so there's the interior of the chamber. 
There we go. That's where your shell casing sits. And then you've got the neck, and there come the landings and the grooves. Okay? All right. So one of the first things, the comments, <laughs> I've started looking into this thing was I was like, wow, look at that. Let's go ahead and brighten that up a little bit for you. I was like, wow, look at the uh, interior. And I was like, wait a minute, this is the Bear Creek Arsenal. So what I'm seeing looks like there's some evidence of some copper in here. But that's where your landings are. You guys, if you y'all who are more uh, versed on this stuff, let me know. But uh, maybe they test fired the barrel. I don't know. Look at that thing. That's a good looking barrel. But yeah, those look like uh, that looks like copper. So I'm, let's keep going. Now I've got the lights turned off so you can see a little bit more about what's going on. So, wait a minute, there is the gas port. Gas port's clean. I hope that's a gas port. Let's just see here, hold on. That's the gas port. That is a very tiny um, hex head. So anyway, I like the fact that you don't have any kind of debris that's poking out. And then we follow it on down. And there's the exterior, as we can see the end of it coming. Bring it on back out. Now, Let's go ahead, so we got that taken care of. Let's take a look at the proof research barrel. Now there, see the tooling on the M4 feed ramps? There's the interior. Here comes the chamber. That thing is, ugh, isn't it beautiful? All right, and here's the interior. That's pretty cool looking, isn't it? It's almost like a mirror polish. You can't even see what's going on. Now, I've not run any kind of a brush through this thing. Before these things go on a rifle, you can I will guarantee you that there will be a... Uh, I will treat these. That's a mirror polish. Where are the grooves? They're barely there. But they are there. Let's see here. Looks like we got a gas port. There's our gas port right there. There you go. That gives you a little bit more definition. Maybe if I turn the lighting down on this thing a little bit, you could see it better. No. Nope. Interesting. And there's the end. But you can see those landings. That's a better image right there of what the landings and the grooves look like. That's a fi interior of a $500 barrel, plus or minus. Pretty cool, I think. There they are. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and accurize the upper receiver on these guys. Uh, I'm going to do them at the same time. So uh, basically, when you accurize, we're going to take this guy right here. This is the uh, AR-15 receiver lapping tool from Wheeler. Now, there's a lot of other brands that are out there. It's probably a lot better than this, but this was available on uh, Amazon. And we're going to use a 220 grit lapping compound. And like I said, a 609, we're going to go ahead and secure those to the upper receiver. But there it is, man. Proof research. That is a gorgeous barrel. She does smar up a little bit. 
but I will tell you this, I'm really looking forward to uh, putting this thing through its paces. So let's do this. We're going to take a mil spec upper receiver. This guy right here is actually going to get the uh, Rainier Arms uh, Ultra Match set. So we're going to have a basically a lot of fun. Let's go to Boy 32. Sports red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless his men, women in uniform. 24 7 for freedom. Freedom. Man, I tell you what, you always pull for the underdog. But uh, this will be an interesting story if this guy shoots as good as this guy. So there you go. Let's go to Boy 32. I'm out.